alpha antitrypsin and protected it. So this is a nice little diagram. You can look at that at home, and it just shows you cigarette smoke and the smoke of everything that we just talked about. So going again with the pathogenesis here, these enzymes will release inflammatory cells. We already know neutrophils are part of this, macrophages, and this leads to the alveolar damage. So these macrophages are going to come eat away the chemicals from the cigarette smoke, but what they're not realizing is that they're eating away the normal epithelium that's supposed to stay here. You also have a reduction in the pulmonary capillary bed, which means that if you remember Capillaries sit over the alveoli. So if you have alveoli that's just being torn away, torn away, the next, the next, uh, I should say, organ that's there, so to speak, or vessel, is the capillaries. So the capillaries are also going to be destroyed. Once you destroy the capillaries, you are now causing this situation to where these individuals do not have the proper oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange because the capillaries are gone. <coughs> So here is a picture of the alveoli. So what you see here is a, different from the picture that we looked at before with um, whoops, the chronobrachitis um, or as chronobrachitis. These individuals, here's the alveoli, and here is supposed to be like the epithelium, the squamous epithelium. But what you're looking at here is that the alveoli is large. And not only large, but as you can see, it has breaks here, which means it's actually destroyed. So parts of it will be sort of blown out and destroyed, which leaves this sort of whole looking appearance to it if you were to look at, a, you know, a lung, um, a, a gross anatomy type lung. <clears throat> the other thing that happens here, they lose elastic tissue in the lung which decreases the size of the bronchioles, and it results in radial traction, which holds the airway open. This is an issue. So you know how when the bronchi, it does have little muscles around it, okay? So when you inhale, exhale, it sort of expands and contracts and kind of get the air in and out. The problem here is that they lose that traction, so it holds the airway open, <clears throat> which means that they will just have air just kind of sitting there. And I'll go over in a second how these patients, they will hyperventilate and what, what allows them to maintain their, they can maintain their oxygen and carbon dioxide levels sometimes because of the hyperventilation and because of the fact that the airway is open. Whereas with asthma and chronic bronchitis, the airway is constricted. But with this is open, okay, and it's because they lost the traction around the bronchial tubes. So. Here is a person with a normal alveoli, you can see, and then here's someone with emphysema. Okay, and this just looks like big balloons. Okay, um, this alveoli is just blown out of proportion. Uh, they do have mucus, as you can see, in the bronchial lumen. Okay, but the main, I would say, the main hallmark of this particular thing with emphysema is that they have blown out, destroyed alveoli. That's pretty much the hallmark of this disease. We have some other hallmarks. Now, this classification here goes over the different types um, as far as their location. I'm not going to test you on this, um, so you don't have to worry, but they do have different locations of where you know this type of emphysema could be located. Now, let's go over some clinical manifestations. Why is it like extremely dark all of a sudden? Going to bed. I'm sorry, I'm going to just turn on a little light. I don't want you to get too sleepy because the heat's on, and the lights are off. Okay. So, clinical manifestations. Um, these patients do have progressive exertional dyspnea. So, as I told you before, the person that I knew had it. Just any little movement, just walking from here to there was just, that was it, okay? And it gets worse. So over days, over months, um, they do get worse with, worse with their dyspnea. Um, increased shortness of breath for past three to four years. They do say that these individuals do get thin. And um, 
Another physical finding with these patients is that they do say sometimes they're tall, thin men around the age that's, uh, I don't know if they had it in the, in the first slide, but they're tall and thin. Um, and it's funny because the guy that I knew had emphysema, he was tall and thin. Um, but what happens here is that they say that the reason why they start to lose weight and become thin is because the body is not getting the oxygen demand that it needs, so then now metabolism increases. So then metabolism will increase and go the, um, not the anaerobic route, but the aerobic route to try to get the oxygen to be restored back into their cells. So this is why they'll lose weight, because the metabolism increases. <clears throat> they will also use accessory muscles to breathe, and they will also have this purslet breathing. So remember I was explaining to you that they have this sort of top breathing, so it'll be like, okay, much like the person that's trying to exhale but can't. Um, they may have a cough. These individuals don't have much mucus. Um, they can have mucus, but not as much as a person like with asthma or chronic bronchitis. Um, it's more of a different situation here. It's more just the air being stuck. Um, so this is what they look like. Um, they do have what they call a barrel chest appearance. So the costal retractions will occur, so you'll see the ribs just kind of sunken in, okay? The other thing too is the chest will the chest cavity will be wide because again air is just trapped in the lung field. Um, they will use the accessory muscles. There's the person of breathing. The other thing is something. Let me just really quickly pull up the picture. Something called digital clubbing. I know that looks weird. <laughs> now, let me explain what is digital clubbing. Digital clubbing, from my understanding, is not a finding that is always with these patients, but it's sort of like a late finding. So you know how cyanosis is late. So it all depends on the lack of oxygen that they're having. Now, this is, I have some conflicting information with this. Because some books say that they have this clubbing, and what the clubbing is, is like an increase of the tissue around, like the fat pad around the, the fingertips, okay? So it's hard? I don't know. I don't know if it's hard, but it's just, it probably is hard because it's a thickness. It's so, so it's more like a hyperplasia of the epithelium. So what happens here is that they say that this happens with the depletion of oxygen that they have. So the less oxygen that they have, the more of this digital clubbing. But then one book, and I think your book, and not this book, but there was another book I was reading that said that what happens is this is also part of the inflammatory process that can also cause this. So I don't want to, I don't want to say is it either or, I'm not going to test you, but I just want to explain what it is. Um, know that digital clubbing is part of emphysema, but just to understand the physiology behind it, it can be, yes, both less oxygen that's causing this and inflammatory. Okay, so let's just say that. So both less oxygen and inflammatory. <coughs> and believe it or not, you will see this in other respiratory diseases that we're going to go over with chapter 23. Okay, so not just uh, this chapter. And I know it looks weird. I, I've never seen that appearance, and I'm trying to think the person that I knew had emphysema, I don't remember seeing that on his fingers. But again, I don't think that's everyone, just a percentage of people that have that Okay, so that's digital clubbing. Okay, now, again, we kind of went over this already. Thin individuals, barrel chest, digital clubbing, which I just showed you a picture of. They will have decreased breath sounds. Um, they don't have crackles. Okay, because keep in mind, they, they have some mucus, maybe some fluid, but not as much as a person with acute, or like a bronchitis or emphysema. So you won't hear as much rails and all that going on in lungs. Um, decreased heart sounds and decreased diaphragmatic excursion. So the diaphragm is not going to be uh, moving as it should. Pulmonary functional testing, 
The only thing I can say here is to memorize that as best you can. Chest x-ray. Chest x-ray will show that these individuals can have a hyperventilation, which means that you will see a lot of air in the lung field, okay, which we already know, which gives them a the barrel chest. Low flat diaphragm, and they will also have presence of Leb's or Boulay. So let me just explain what that is. So say, for example, you have a lung and say, for example, a person with emphysema has a lot of air in the lung. Okay, so they have all this extra air. And so what's going to happen is with all this extra air, it's going to start to form these pockets, the sort of out pouches, okay, and obviously distort the lung itself, okay, so it's just air just being pushed out. Now, what we're going to go over in chapter 23 is that sometimes these patients, and this is just some extra information I'm going to give you now, which we'll go over. Sometimes these patients that have emphysema, if they have these sort of blebs, these blebs can burst and go into the pleural cavity and give them a pneumothorax, and then the lung will collapse, okay? Um, and I'll go over that again, but... Just to explain, these blebs can burst and this air can go into the pleural cavity. When it goes into the pleural cavity, obviously if this keeps bursting and say this one and that one and that one, the lung is going to collapse obviously and cause them. And when the lung collapses, this is what we call a pneumothorax. We're going to go over pneumothorax in the next chapter, so don't worry if you don't get it all. So the mediastinum will get narrow, and that makes sense because if the lung fields are so large, okay, the heart obviously is going to be a little smaller and small in the vertical, and the whole mediastinum will just be shorter. Okay, arterial blood gas, as you can see, these individuals have a mild increase in oxygen. And they have a normal carbon dioxide level, okay? And it can be elevated in late stage if it gets that bad. Now, this looks weird. You're probably thinking, well, why is it sort of normal? The reason why it stays normal is because these patients hyperventilate. So because they're hyperventilating, they're still able to get a certain amount of airflow inside, just enough to keep their arterial blood gas to, I don't want to say a normal level. It's not always normal, but close to normal. Close to normal as possible. ECG, one thing I want to say about ECG findings, um, not that I'll have you memorize, you don't have to worry about tall P waves because we haven't gone over that, but sinus tachycardia. So we, we did not go over chapter 19 which, with all the different arrhythmias, unfortunately, but I do want you to know that ECG findings will be irregular with these patients, and it makes sense because. If you have an enlarged heart, a large lung, and the heart's in the middle, it's going to put more pressure on that heart. Not to mention, if they do have an issue where they may have a pulmonary hypertension, that is also going to cause issues with the heart. So when you think about the respiratory uh, system, please always think about what could happen to the heart as well with these conditions. Oh, and there was one thing I forgot. So when we talked about chronic bronchitis, I'm sorry, I need to go back and give you a term. When we talked about chronic bronchitis, and you know how we said these patients have uh, pulmonary hypertension and it could lead to right-sided heart failure, okay? The term for right-sided heart failure that they use for respiratory conditions is called criminality. Carpulmonary, car, car, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, car, <laughs> C-O-R, not car, car, 
and Pulmonale, P-U-L-M-O-N-A-L-E. This is a term, this is a, a medical term that is used for right-sided heart failure for respiratory conditions only. You will never use this term if you're talking about a person that has maybe uh, a valvular disease or something and then say call from an alley. Okay, so you only use call from an alley for right side of heart failure that is due to respiratory diseases or any kind of respiratory condition. <coughs> Please make sure you know that because um, I have seen that in books and in Clex and I don't even want to say in Clex, but I have seen that in a lot of different books. Um, and they do use that terminology, and I'm quite sure you guys will be charting it that way as well. Okay. Now, treatment, kind of the same thing here is uh, chronic bronchitis, oxygen therapy, B2 agonist, bronchodilator, so nothing quite different. So the same type of treatment that we talked about with uh, chronic bronchitis. Okay. And that's it. That's where I'm stopping. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's for that. Can you stop there? Thank you.